Hey, Newbie Dan here. I'm building a new drill press table. This isn't it, by the way. And there's one obstacle I need to overcome before I can build the table the way I want to. I have to do something about this crank. It's awkward to use, annoying, and most importantly, I have to cut out a part of my table in order to use it. After some experimenting, I finally come up with a solution that works great. I'm calling this an articulated crankshaft because that sounds cooler than a crankshaft with a right angle adapter thingy. It stays out of the way, so I won't have to cut into my new table. And I can use a drill to raise and lower the drill press table quick and easy. No more annoying hand cranking. Although I suppose you could still crank it by hand if hand cranking's your thing. By the way, if you don't like the wooden version I've got here, you could also make this out of a hex socket and drill extension like this. So stick around and I'll show you all about it. The heart of this articulated crankshaft is this right angle adapter thingy I got from Amazon. I bought this in a package of two for $13 because I thought I might need a second one. You can buy one for $7. Links are in the description below. It has a quarter inch hex shaft on one end and it accepts a quarter inch hex shaft in the other. Any kind of hex shaft. It's magnetic so it holds the shaft once you insert it. Turn this shaft and it turns the other shaft. I removed the annoying crank by loosening the set screw. The set screw presses against this flat portion on the crankshaft. Then I needed to figure out how to attach this end of the adapter to the crankshaft. One option I considered, and you could certainly try it if you wanted, was to use a hex socket like these cheap ones I got at Harbor Freight. I was thinking I could use an angle grinder to flatten the sides of the crankshaft, turning it into a hex shaft then drilling and tapping a hole in the socket for the set screw. But when it got down to it, I was too chicken to try. Still, if you want to try it, it's certainly an option. Instead, I decided to manufacture an adapter using the material I know best, which is, of course, wood. Here's the end result so you can see what we're building. It's got a 9 16 inch hole in this end, which fits my crankshaft, and it has a set screw so I can tighten it down. On this end, it has a hex shaft, which I got by cutting off the end of a drill bit I don't use anymore. More on that in a moment. So this is really just two pieces of wood glued together, then rounded over a little on the sander. Obviously, you could leave them square if you wanted. Make sure you make them out of a hardwood like maple or a good quality plywood like this Baltic birch. I had a scrap piece of Baltic birch plywood that was 1 and 3 8 inch wide, and that seemed like a good size, so I cut two squares from it. The first square is for attaching to the crankshaft. So I needed to drill a 9 16 inch hole for the crankshaft. I didn't trust my 9 16 inch bit to create a clean hole, so the first thing I did was drill a pilot hole all the way through. Then I used my half inch brad point bit to drill part way through from one side and finish from the other side. This bit cuts much cleaner holes than my 9 16 inch bit. When that was done, I enlarged the hole with the 9 16 inch bit. It ended up pretty clean, and it fits the shaft nicely. I'm going to use this thumb screw for the set screw. Later on, I switched to a real set screw, but for this part, it works better to have a thumb screw. This is a quarter inch screw, so I used a 7 seconds inch bit for the hole. I drilled down deep enough to get into the center hole without going through the other side. Then I pressed the thumb screw into the hole and twisted it, and eventually it made its own threads. After working it in and out a few times, it was just about right. Tight enough to not loosen on its own, but not too tight. It fits on the crankshaft perfectly. And when I tighten down the thumb screw and turn the block, it raises or lowers the table just like I wanted. I mentioned earlier that I got my hex shaft from drill bits I don't use anymore. And I did that by using my angle grinder. But you could use a hacksaw if you don't have an angle grinder. After cutting off each piece, I smoothed the edges a little on the angle grinder. I took the second square of wood I cut earlier and drilled a quarter inch hole in the middle. Then I hammered the hex shaft into the hole. As you can see, I didn't do a very good job of keeping it straight. I got a comment recently asking me to show how to fix mistakes. Well, Desert Dave, stick around because later on I'll show you how I fixed this one. I glued the two squares together and left them to dry. While the glue was drying, I made the crankshaft extension. If you want, you can just use a drill extension like this. And if you ever need it for something else, it's a snap to remove it. But I decided to make it out of wood. 
At first, I tried using pine, but it was too soft to hold the hex shafts, so I ended up making it out of maple. I wanted to use the drill press to drill the holes in the ends for the hex shafts, so I measured to find out the maximum length I could drill. I had a maple board that was three quarters of an inch thick, so I cut a three quarter inch square shaft to the right length. Then I used a quarter inch bit to drill holes in the ends for the hex shafts. To be honest, I'm not sure whether using the drill press here was a good idea or not, so feel free to do it however you want. I took the shaft over to the router table and used a quarter inch roundover bit to make the shaft more or less round. You could certainly leave it square if you want, or turn it on a lathe, or whatever. I clamped the shaft in a vise and hammered the hex shaft in on one end. Then I did my best to get the hex shaft of the right angle adapter thingy into the other end. By now, the glue on the crankshaft adapter was dry, so I took the clamps off and started sanding it. I had to stop to replace the sandpaper on my sanding disc, which is in another video. Then I sanded off the corners and rounded it over. Sorry my hand is in the way in this shot. Here's the result, if it'll stay in focus long enough to see it. And here it is in action. Remember when I said I didn't get the hex shaft into the adapter very straight? Well this is the result. See the wobble? Here's how we fix this. I took the hex shaft out of the adapter by pounding a screw into the hole from the other side. Then I used some JB Weld Quickwood putty to fill the hole. You cut off a section and it's two colors, so you knead it until the colors blend together. It ends up looking like silly putty. Then I crammed some down into the hole, enough to fill the hole, and tapped down any excess from the other side. Then I left it to dry. Normally you only need 20 minutes or so, but this is a pretty big chunk of putty, so I let it dry overnight. The next morning, I redrilled the quarter inch hole. I had sanded the top so it was even, but I forgot to record that, sorry. I wanted to start the hex shaft into the hole as straight as possible, so I used my drill press to insert it as far as I could. Then I carefully tapped it down the rest of the way, trying to keep it straight. I put it on the crankshaft, and now it's pretty smooth. After that, I replaced the thumb screw with a quarter inch set screw. I think it's 3 eighths of an inch long, if memory serves. Much better. So here's a look at it with my almost finished drill press table. Be sure to keep an eye out for the build video for this table, coming soon. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider leaving a comment. Thanks! Check out the description for links to products seen in this video. Just scroll down. Click Show More, and scroll down until you see the links. And if you like what I do here, click that subscribe button, and don't forget to ring that bell to get notified about new videos. Thanks!